16, uh, last part of the chapter, so it's 16.4, types of circuits. So we learned on the last lecture about series circuits. So those were circuits that had only one path for the electrical current to follow. But as we learned about those circuits, we know that there's really only one option for things that are on there. It's either, it's either on or it's off. And we all know that that's not really how most of our lives work. I mean, if you can even imagine in your house having the option for everything on, everything off. But if you had to use the toaster and then that meant you needed to literally turn everything on in your house, that would not be realistic. So what we have um, that makes it so that that doesn't happen are... Um, parallel circuits. So parallel circuits give us that opportunity to have some things function and other things not functioning uh, at those times. So 16.4 is all about those circuits, uh, parallel circuits. So parallel circuits are electric circuits that have more than one path for that current uh, to flow in. So you can even just see in the picture here, um, now, when I look at it, I can see that how that current can flow, follow those purple arrows, how it can, you know, have multiple paths as it uh, flows around there. Now, each of these paths are sometimes called a branch. So you'll even hear me say that. So each path in the circuit is sometimes called a branch and the current through it is then called the branch current. So when you guys look at this particular one, um, that's on there. Just imagine that electric current as it's flowing around there has the opportunity to go through each one of those light bulbs and it doesn't necessarily mean it has to go through every single one uh, like the series circuit did. All right, something that we use uh, when we talk about uh, this current as it's going through parallel circuits is familiar because we heard this in the last section, but this is called Kirchhoff's current law. So all of the current entering a circuit branch has to exit again, that whole like uh, cannot create or destroy energy thing. So that is Kirchhoff's current law. All current flowing into a branch point has to essentially flow out again. You're not gonna create or destroy electrons. So when you look at the picture, so it's the same picture again, you'll notice you got two dots, two green dots and two black dots in there. So if you look at the picture, you can see how that three amp current that's coming out of those uh, batteries splits at two points, those two different green, green dots. And the two points um, where they come back together are gonna be the black dots. If you measure the branch currents, you can see that they're all one amp in the picture there. Then the current supplied by the battery is the sum of all three of those. So if you add the one amp, one amp plus one amp, it's gonna come back to three amps. So, so same thing again, cannot create or destroy energy. So the current is just splitting in each branch point, just like the water. You're not gonna change the amount of water that's in those pipes. It just has a different path essentially to flow through. All right, so voltage and current in a parallel circuit. So voltage and current in a parallel circuit. So voltage across each branch in a parallel circuit is the same. So I'll say that again. Voltage across each branch in a parallel circuit is the same. So you're not going to alter the voltage just because you're giving that electric current more uh, choices essentially to flow around. So we, there's some advantages obviously of using, like we talked about earlier, advantages of using parallel circuits over series circuits. Um, so the first one, I'm not having you write it down, but it is important, so I'm going to mention it. Each device um, in the circuit has a voltage drop equal to the full battery voltage. And then secondly, the one that we talked about that we most commonly think about, each device in the circuit can be turned off independently without stopping the current in the other devices. So I can turn one thing on and I don't have to turn other things on um, if I want to want to be using something. Uh, the current in a branch might be different. So um, just like we've determined current prior, so you're still using Ohm's law, current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. And here's the thing, the greater the resistance, the smaller the current. Makes sense, right? So remember what resistance is doing, it's slowing down that electric current. So the greater the resistance, the smaller the current. The difference though here, because we're talking about parallel circuits, each branch works independently. So the current in one branch does not depend on uh, what happens in the other branches. So you're determining all this information independently for each branch.
the total current in a parallel circuit then um, is going to be the sum of all of those currents. So you add them all up. So if I look at uh, this particular one that you see on the slide here, uh, 1 amp plus 0.5 amps, add that up. 1.5 amps, it equals the total. So the total current in a parallel circuit is, is the sum of all the currents in each branch. All right, a lot of stuff on this slide. Okay, I'll try to take it slow here though. All right, so current and resistance in a series circuit. So still using Ohm's law, current is voltage divided by resistance. So if I look at the top picture here, so that's my series circuit. I get one path to move through there. So voltage divided by resistance, I can see in the top picture, I have 12 volts and I'm gonna divide that by two ohms. So that gives me six amps right on the side there. So that's my current. If I wanna figure out resistance in that, look at the formula. Resistance is voltage divided by current. So I've got 12 volts. We just figured out it was six amps, so the resistance is two ohms. Okay, on the bottom one now, look at the difference. So parallel circuit, still using I equals V over R, so 12 volts divided by two ohms, but keep in mind here, because it's parallel, that means it's six amps in each branch. So because I have two branches, it actually means my current is 12 amps. So six amps in each branch for parallel, so my overall current is 12 amps. So now if I do the same math, resistance is equal to voltage divided by current, 12 volts divided by 12 amps, resistance is one ohm. So the weird thing is, and it's kind of hard to, to picture this, but look at the math just proved it to us, in a parallel circuit, adding resistors will decrease the overall resistance. It's kind of weird to think, right? You're just giving that current more choices uh, to move around, essentially, in that circuit. If too much current is flowing through a wire, so even think of this too like water, if you try to push too much water through a pipe, you're gonna have problems. What happens with electrons, by the nature of how they function, they may overheat, you're getting too much push through there, it may cause a fire. So that's why it's really important. You don't wanna to try to pull more electricity from something that it's designed to give you. So if I have an outlet and I sit and just plug stuff in after and after and after, keep going, you are drawing way too much current. If I'm pulling way too much current, then I can start a fire. I'm sure we've all seen a Christmas story. And the funny thing where he's plugging the lamp in and it's got all the cords going on there, yeah, that, that's not really safe. Uh, we should not be doing that. So what can happen sometimes too is something called a short circuit. So if you have a branch in a circuit with zero or very low resistance, so same thing, you're getting too much current flowing through through there that it's designed to flow, you can start a fire. Um, it can and oh, it can overheat. Not not good at all. So on our homes, we have some safety devices to try to stop these things from happening. I'm sure, hopefully, you know where this is in your house. So you have circuit breakers with a fuse box. Um, what they're designed to do is, is if they detect that there's too much current going through there, they'll just stop the current. They'll shut it. So maybe you have something in your house. Let's say it's holiday time. You get to plug it in a crock pot, a crock pot, and you're going to town, and maybe you got a griddle going, and you got the coffee pot, and all of a sudden you're like, hey, nothing's working, and then you go flip, flip the switch. That's not the smartest thing to do. That is your house telling you you are drawing way too much electricity, and you shouldn't be doing it. So that's all a circuit breaker is. It's just a way for your house to essentially tell you, you get too much electricity going through there. Not only in your house do we have fuses, we have uh, fuses elsewhere. Um, so let's say like even in your car. So think of in your car, everything that we have in there that uses electricity. Uh, here's a, a couple examples of fuses. Now you'll see in the one picture where it's got the red arrow pointing and you want on the right hand side, fuses will contain uh, metals that have a lower melting point. So if they detect too much current, they get hot, they melt, and you've now opened up that circuit. Those those electrons don't have the ability, just like in a normal circuit, to jump from one side of the fuse to the other. So then it stops um, whatever you are trying to use from actually drawing electric current. So that's all a fuse is. It's just another safety device uh, that we have in things to prevent uh, too much electricity from flowing through. You might have outlets like this in your house. They're called ground fault circuit interrupters. Um, instead of the fuse going all the way to your fuse box, it's just essentially built into the actual outlet. So these are found in a lot of places that contain 
water. So like kitchens and bathrooms so that you're more of, um, you're more at risk of electrocution. So they want to make sure that there's a further safety device in, in that area. Same thing again, if you guys are finding, hey, um, this outlet is constantly tripping, then maybe you're pulling too much electricity. Um, and that's, and that you shouldn't be doing that. Obviously, like I just said with water, you need to be careful with water. Um, the water that we typically use in a pool, in your faucet, um, electricity easily passes through. As we saw in class, we know that it doesn't pass through distilled water, uh, but this isn't distilled water. When it comes out of the, the ground, most of the time it comes out of the tap, it contains other ions, so electricity likes to jump on those ions and then pass through them. So you want to be careful anytime you have electricity um, around water. So Ohm's Law is obviously the number one formula that we're using in this entire section. So here's just another formula here. All of the electrical outlets in Jonah's living room are on one parallel circuit. The circuit breaker cuts off the current if it exceeds 15 amps. Uh, is it going to trip if he uses his light, a radio, and an air conditioner, and then give you the ohms reading there? So they just want to know, is the current going to be greater than 15 amps? So current is voltage divided by resistance. So I'm just going to take for each one, so for the light, the stereo, and the air conditioner, take the voltage divided by the resistance, and it's going to give you the amps. That's the current that you're drawing for each one of those things. So if I add every single one of those up, you can see it equals 13.3 amps. So no, the circuit breaker uh, is not going to trip. All right, so parallel circuits are great. They give us an advantage over series circuits in that we can have things on and off, but they do function a little bit differently than our series circuits that we first saw.